This video explains HD or Dolby Vision grading, including its levels and profiles. Step 1. Grading for HDR. We begin with raw camera footage. Each shot is graded shot by shot in software like DaVinci Resolve to create a 12-bit HDR master. The master is done on a P3 or BT2020 mastering monitor of 1000, 2000, or 4000 nits. The colorist has full creative control over brightness and color during this step. Once complete, the HDR master is delivered a 10-bit YOV for 2.0 file, the base layer for both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Step 2. Dolby Vision Metadata Generation Dolby's algorithms analyze each pixel in the HDR master, creating metadata for each shot. This data includes minimum, average, and maximum brightness levels. It's created automatically by Dolby's system and reflects the actual brightness of the HD or grade. This metadata allows content to adapt to any display brightness. Dolby Vision is designed to adjust brightness and color gamut, tone mapping, for any target brightness down to 100 nit SDR. Step 3. Optional Trim Passes While optional, Dolby strongly recommends adding at least an SDR trim pass, targeting 100 nits. This trim pass works with the previously generated L1 L3 metadata for a more accurate tone mapping. The system will automatically provide a default tone mapping preview of the trims, and the colorist will go through all the shots again and adjust the trim to his artistic intent. Most of the time, only a 100 nits trim is required by the studio but the colorist has the option to add other levels of trims, 600, 1000 and 2000 nits. I'll show you later in this video how the trims work on real content. In other words, the trim passes metadata are different grades of the original HD or master that will be used by your TV to target its brightness capabilities for the most accurate representation of the image. For example, if a program were graded relative to a 4000 nit display, along with a single 100 nit BT.709 trim pass, then a Dolby Vision compatible television with 750 nit peak output will reference the 100 nit trim pass metadata in order to come up with the best way of splitting the difference to output the signal correctly. On the other hand, with a colorist to do three trim passes, the first at 100 nits, conned at 600 nits, and a third at 1000 nits, then a 750 nit capable Dolby Vision television would be able to use the 600 and 1000 nit trim metadata to output more accurately scaled color volume and HD or strength highlights. Relative to the colorist adjustments, that take better advantage of the 750 nit output of that television. Level 1. The Dolby Vision analysis provides three values for each shot, describing the image and its dynamic range. L1 can vary frame by frame, although all Blu-ray discs are analyzed shot by shot. Currently, the only program known to utilize frame by frame Dolby Vision is the Amazon Prime show, Jack Ryan. Over time, the Dolby Vision algorithm has undergone evolution. Earlier versions had no restrictions whereas the latest CMV 4.0 version imposes a 100-nit floor for maximum brightness metadata and a 10-nit minimum for average metadata. If you need it, there's the link to the script I'm using to generate the Dolby Vision pot graph. What is the newly introduced analysis tuning? The newly introduced analysis tuning empowers colorists to choose the strength of highlight retention and mapping from a predefined set of spatial filters based on user preference. The tuning options will filter out less relevant highlight details such as small speculars, noise, and compression artifacts so that the mapped image serves as a better starting point for trimming. Depending on the selection, L1 metadata values for the same clip may vary. The tunnings range from very conservative, most highlight retention, and a darker image, to very aggressive, least mapping, and potentially clipped highlights. Are there other factors that influence the mapping? The new analysis tunnings also include a new L1 mid-measurement, that better balances the importance of brightness and color within each frame. Further, the L1 min calculation was updated to improve the picture quality on mainstream and lower-end televisions and devices with more limited black response. How can colorists benefit from the new analysis tuning? If you use one of the newly introduced analysis tuning options, the image should be brighter and more balanced after analysis, retaining more of the original dynamic range. Here's what level 1 metadata looks like in real content. The higher the value the more aggressive the tone mapping is. All my Dolby Vision test files are available through a link in the description.
Once the Dolby analysis is completed, the colorist has the option to blend or copy metadata from one similar shot to another. Blending is analyzing multiple selected shots as if they were a single sequence. The result is the same analysis being saved to each clip, useful to save time when analyzing multiple clips that have identical content. The Level 8 artistic trims are not generated automatically by the Dolby system. They must 100% come from the colorist. 99% of the movies only have a manual 100 nits trim, which is what the studios require. In a CMV 4.0 workflow, the system will automatically generate level to trims in the CMV 2.9 block for compatibility with older hardware. It generates L2 at three levels, 100. 601,000 nits and any adjustments done in L8 or L3 mid-tone, offset will be reflected in the generated L2 trims. Most of the Blu-ray discs are delivered in CMV 2.9 but are created in a CMV 4.0 workflow, which means that the 100, 601,000 nits trims on Blu-ray discs are just a conversion from the manual level 100 nits trim done by the colorist. Lift gamma and gain controls. These controls function similarly to the typical color grading control Y only lift, gamma, and gain master wheels of the color wheels palette to let you trim the overall contrast levels of the image. The Dolby Best Practices Guide recommends to limit positive lift to no more than 0.0 to 5, and mostly, restrict yourself to using gamma and gain if necessary to lighten the image. Chroma weight. Dark and saturated parts of the image to preserve color fullness in areas of the image that are clipped by smaller gamuts that don't have enough headroom for saturation in the highlights. Tone detail. Lets you preserve contrast detail in the highlights that might otherwise be lost when the highlights are mapped to lower dynamic ranges, usually due to clipping. Increasing tone detail weight increases the amount of highlight detail that's preserved. When used can have the effect of sharpening highlight detail. Mid-contrast bias affects image contrast in the region around the computed average picture level. This lets you increase or decrease contrast in the midtones of the image. Highlight clipping reduces details and affects the roll off the brighter part of the image by clipping the highlights as required. This is useful when the tone mapped image is displaying unwanted details. You can preview the tone mapping without the trims and just like level 1, you can copy metadata from one similar shot to another if needed. Trims can be created at different levels, but as mentioned earlier, we rarely see 601000 nits trim passes. Secondary saturations. A set of slider based vector style controls, similar to the hue versus saturation curve, lets you adjust the saturation of red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta to help you selectively fine tune the results. Secondary hues. Another set of slider based vector style controls lets you adjust the hue of red, yellow, 
green, cyan, blue, and magenta to help you fine-tune the results. I mentioned that Dolby recommends not going higher than 0.0 to 5 for the lift metadata. Here's why. As you can see, unlike gamma and gain, lift will raise the whole image brightness, including the letterbox. Strangely though, this lift metadata is ignored by all the HDMI devices I've tested except the Windows 10 or 11 player. I'm not sure. Why Dolby recommends not going higher than 0.0 to 5 when in the end the metadata is completely ignored on most HDMI players. The metadata is working just fine when played through the TV internal player. Offset for Dolby Vision CMV for 0.0 added to level 1 metadata generated by the analyze buttons in the Dolby Vision controls. It also stores the mid-tone offset data. Level 5 metadata, which provides information about the aspect ratio of the deliverable format and the aspect ratio of the actual image within that format. Also applicable at the per clip level, this metadata is ignored by all the HDMI devices except Windows 10 and 11 players. This means that the tone mapping is always applied to the whole image, letterbox included. Level 6 stores the max CLL and max fall levels required by the HDR10 mastering standard of HDR. This metadata has no effect on Dolby Vision playback. Level 9 metadata describes the color primaries and white point of the mastering monitor display used for the project. Level 9 is calculated automatically from the mastering display selection made by the colorist during the Dolby Vision content creation process. Level 9 is listed per shot to improve the alignment of the XML to the bitstream metadata carriage. Automatic picture optimization is a feature in Dolby Vision IQ branded televisions. This feature is controlled by level 11 metadata, which is supported in V5.1.0 XML and has two configurable settings. Combining level 11 metadata with Dolby Vision, the Dolby Vision IQ TV preserves the original frame rate, colors and disables TV processing, similar to UHD as filmmaker mode. Content type. This setting controls TV processing such as FRC, sharpness, noise reduction, etc. When setting this to cinema, this will set the TV to playback similarly as UHD Alliance's filmmaker mode. Intended white point. This setting is for the intended white point for the content. Generally, this will be set to the white point of the mastering display. Adobe Vision IQ branded television is required to preview the effect of level 11 metadata. This can be previewed through the use of HDMI tunneling in a licensed third-party Dolby Vision partner products, or by encoding the mezzanine using an encoder that has updated the Dolby Vision Pro encoder SDK to version 6.0 or higher and playing it back on a Dolby Vision IQ TV. ICTP is a color representation designed for high dynamic range and wide color gamut imagery, and is intended as a replacement for non-constant luminance CUR with HDR and WCG signals. Distortions already known to be caused by non-uniformity of standard dynamic range and CLE CUR will become more prevalent as display capabilities improve. When setting a new standard for HDR and WCG a significantly improved color representation, Design for the coming evolution should be included. It follows the same operations as NCL ICR and has similar benefits as constant luminance, while additionally improving color uniformity. This is achieved by utilizing aspects of the human visual system and by optimizing for lines of constant hue, uniformity of just noticeable difference ellipses, and constant luminance. Profile 8.1 is 10-bit single layer with HDR10 fallback support. It contains the same dynamic metadata as P5 in the RPU. Can also have an HLG base layer profile 8.4. Profile 7 is the format used on Blu-ray discs. It's a dual layer format, that is MEL10 bit or FEL1 to bit. FEL equals full enhancement layer. MEL equals minimal enhancement layer. Street DL equals single track dual layer, created with make MKV, MKV tool NIX. DTDL equals dual track dual layer, the original Blu-ray format. P7 fell equals HD or 1010 bits base layer, plus 1 to bits data in enhancement layer 1080p stream, plus dynamic metadata in RPU. P7 mel equals HD or 1010 bits base layer, plus blank enhancement layer 1080p stream, 
plus dynamic metadata in our PU. Mail Profile 7 is the same quality as Profile 8 since the L doesn't not contain any information except the RPU. Fel P7 contains the difference between the original 12-bit master and the 10-bit HD or 10-base layer encode. If the base layer is properly encoded and the full enhancement layer doesn't touch the brightness, colors, it doesn't really add anything to our 10-bit TVs. There's a link in the description of many full enhancement layer versus base layer comparisons.